Hey guys, Sean Allison here from Spoken hey Garden. Hey guys. Hey, we're here to help you become a better gardener. And today we're gonna talk to you about fall prep out in your garden. Yep, we've got a lot of things to do. I mean, there's tons of stuff to do in fall, right? Oh yeah. There's always a lot to do. Oh yeah, the list goes on and on. But today we're gonna talk to you about seed uh, seed sowing. We're gonna sow some seeds yep, for some fall crops and walk you through that. We're also gonna check uh, some of the plants we wanna take seeds from that we wanna harvest. Yeah, we're not sure if they're ready um, yet, so. Yeah, yeah, so we're gonna talk to you about that. And then we're also gonna go over, you know, the same old, same old, mulching, weeding. That's what we got planned, so. Yeah, let's get to let's it. We'll show you what we're gonna do and maybe this will help you if you're not sure what to do right now in your garden. So. One of the things we're doing today for fall prep is we're going to plant some seeds. We're going to plant some fall crops. And what we have here is we've got some parsnips, we've got some lettuce, romaine lettuce, we've got some kale, and we've got some carrots. I like want to plant all of them. I know, I know they won't all fit. There, there's more. I, yeah, I don't think all of them will fit in this one place, but we can start them here and then we can transplant them out Ooh, and pla yeah. place them somewhere else a little bit later. The great thing about pretty much all of these is they will they will actually come to harvest uh, from the time that we sow them to come to harvest, it'll be about 60 days, maybe 70 or so days, but we still have enough time to do this. So it's important to know how many days you have to actually plant these from when you plant them to when you harvest them because you need to know about your first frost date because some of these plants, some of these uh, vegetables, they're not gonna do that great after that first frost and then it continues to get colder and colder and the temperatures keep going down. These plants will, as a crop, peter out, especially after you get maybe one or two crops out of them, one or two harvestings. So it's important to know that date and what you can do is you can go to almanac.com and click on the garden tab and look at first frost dates or frost dates. And so I, out here, I believe it's November 13th is our first frost date here. So we have plenty of time, 60 plus days, to get these specific uh, vegetable crops uh, planted and get them growing so we can actually harvest from them before that first frost date. All right, so let's get these guys in the ground here. First, let's make sure we read the back of the packet. These are parsnips and we need to plant these. Let's see. I love parsnips. Seed love. depth is, is half an inch. So we're gonna need to make sure that we plant each one of these seeds at half an inch. And they need to be spaced about every, they say three seeds um, grouped up uh, every three inches. So half, half an inch deep, uh, every three inches. So I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna get down here. I'm gonna start and half an inch, let's see. Oh, so what's really important too is you wanna get that seed depth uh, correct pretty much every time because that will improve and in increase uh, every seed's germination rate. And so you want to make sure that they germinate so they grow, right? So getting that depth is really critical. So um, whether you're using um, a pencil, whether you're using chopsticks, or you're using what we have here is a Dibby XL. It's the big sister to the little Dibby. And so um, I'm going to use this uh, to make sure that I get the right, correct seed depth. And we're going to go quarter, let's see, eighth inch, quarter inch, half inch is that third ring right there. So I'm going to make sure that I use this and just go down just, just enough. Make my hole. Every, about every three inches, we're going to eyeball it. There we go. So, and remember, it's just half an inch. It's not, it's not too deep. You go too deep, then not enough light will hit these seeds. You go too shallow, too much light will hit these seeds. So it's really important to get that seed depth correctly. Which is exactly why we created this tool. Yep, yep, yep. So let me get a These are available on Etsy right now, you guys. Oh, there we go. So it says group groupings of three. Oh, yeah. So I'm going to put them in. I'm going to put three of these guys, three seeds in each hole. Okay. And so one, two, three. First one was a dud. There we go. There's two. How do you know it was a dud? Because it was just a piece. Of oh. A, it was a piece of a seed. Well, that's not good. So, okay. So now oh, we've got that. I'm so that. excited. I love that. Just going to use my finger here. You can also use the DBXL to do this if you wanted to. Maybe, maybe use this other end here. Notice you chose blue today. Is that because it matches your shirt? No, uh, no. I kind just of, like the color blue. Kind of matches. Blue agrees with me. See all the colors over there, you guys? Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, so fun. So, okay. So we got parsnips. Parsnips. Parsnips are done. Let's do carrots next. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Planting depth is a quarter of an inch. And they need to be half inch spaced. That's interesting. So let's see. Where's a quarter inch on our divvy? Quarter, quarter inch is that second, 
that second ring right there. So it goes eighth inch, quarter inch, and then half inch. Cool. So, yep, so we're gonna go to that second ring. We're gonna use the second ring on there. Let's see, we're right there. We're gonna go here. So let's go right about there. And these are gonna be really tightly spaced. Here. And of course, we'll thin them later once they pop up. Yeah. And that's where the other end of the divvy comes in. It says seed spacing half an inch. So oh, I, wow. I could go, I could go a lot closer together here. Yeah, so we'll get the rest of these uh, rest of these guys planted up. These vegetable crops. What, what we got? We, we got we have romaine lettuce and we got kale next. So oh, that is that that rouge de ver? Yes. Oh, I love yes, it. Yes, it is. Yep. So I'm gonna do a row. Mm -hmm. I'll do a third row, and then I'll, maybe I'll do a fourth row, or maybe I'll start over here yeah, and, and fill this saying, up. Don't we we'll space, space these out so they can really grow. Sweet. That'll be cool. Okay. Cool. Okay. Okay, you guys, the next task on our list is mulching. And we we always mulch. You guys probably know if you've watched our videos for any length of time, we mulch almost every season. Um, right now we is a great time to mulch. Fall is an awesome time to mulch actually, but we're ahead of fall a little bit, right? So what we need to do is get some of our containers over here. They're still, they kind of have exposed dirt. Oh, hey Lou. Or I know there's Louie, hi Louie. Um, or there's, there is mulch in some of these containers, as you can see, but it's totally broken down, which is awesome. Yeah, right there but and over there. It needs to be replenished. Yeah, these guys don't have really any. I know, it's kind of bare dirt over here. Yeah. So mulch is an awesome insulator. It's a great protector for your plants, your plants' roots. Um, it helps retain moisture. There's just, I mean, the benefits are endless of mulch. And it depends on the type of mulch you use and you know it's your choice but we choose to use what's called arborist mulch or wood chip mulch and again those of you that have followed us for a while you would know how much we love arborist mulch so i've got my wheelbarrow full of mulch here i'm just going to sort of scoop it or grab it in with my hands and just carefully place it in the containers being really careful not to put it right up against the plant stems we'll go about two inches out from the base of the plant and kind of make a ring and that's where all the mulch will stay. And the reason for that is because mulch can, as it's breaking down, as it gets wet, it could actually harm your plants and cause them to rot. You don't wanna have that happen. You want it to help the soil not affect the plant itself. All right, so let's get started. I'm gonna grab a scoop over here. I have to kind of pick through this a little bit because there's some kind of larger chunks and we don't want that in the yeah. containers. Yeah, arborist mulch, depending on your source, there can be multiple different sizes in all of it. And so yeah, and some sometimes you got to sift through it and get the big. stuff you want. So be really careful. Actually, it's going to be kind of tight in here. Let me just put this over here. Nope. Really? Some of this is already starting to break down, so it's kind of sticking together. Yeah. Yeah. And this mulch, it's been sitting out uh, in front of Allison's mom house for a little while, probably about a year. So it's developed some, it has been a year, some pretty it? funky stuff inside of it, um, unfortunately. So don't be but, scared. Yeah, don't be scared. It's okay. Um, but yeah, it's it's interesting stuff. So, but it'll still work. It's going to do a great job of insulating those plant roots and keeping the moisture in there, like Allison was uh, telling you. So. so this is kind of a random mixed pot that we will eventually replant, but we've got a mum here that we're trying to protect and some random alyssum and some bulbs and oh yeah there's bulbs in there i forgot about i that. know we have, we have bulbs everywhere oh, there's that alyssum let's see yeah pretty oh yeah i see the grape hyacinth now yeah there's hyacinth it's already starting to the leaves are starting to come it's up right there around something the here this might just be a weed i think i'm just gonna pull that yeah that's weed okay we'll get yep. that later okay good job so again i wanted to make sure i didn't put it right up against the the base of the plant here the mulch is about two inches out. Might need a little bit more back there. Yeah, maybe. Okay, so moving on. Again, just, and you can do the same thing on the ground with all your ground beds. As you know, Sean and I are all about containers right now. Containers are life. Yep, we're, we're uh, garden nomads. Just for now. Just for now. And it's fun. We're making the best of it. Yeah, it's actually been a lot of fun. Oh. So I'm gonna keep going here. Another benefit though, you guys, if you could see these zinnias over here. Oh, the zinnias. Yes, these are annuals. Yes, we love zinnias. We usually grow a lot of zinnias. 
And a reason to put it in here, even though these are annuals, is we might be able to prolong the life of the annuals a little bit longer than normal because they'll be that much more protected. Yep. It's worth a try, right? Yep, worth a try. So I'm gonna keep going and getting um, as many containers as I can. And um, this was a great, we're so happy to be getting this done today. Yep. So another task on our list today is to look for any of the plants that we're gonna actually harvest seeds from. Hey. And some of those are our Edo peonies. Now, this is the first year we've grown these. These are beautiful Edo peonies right here, one and then two. You can see we've got seed pods on, on here. Oh, so and cool. we were lucky that these, both of these plants actually flowered uh, the first year after we planted them uh, with transplant shock and you know going through everything they went through to get harvested and then sold um, and coming to us. So we felt really lucky to have them bloom for us, let alone get these seed pods. Now, what we need to look for in these Edo peonies is these seed pods need to crack, turn brown and, and crack and have right along, you see that seam right, oh, sorry. There's a seam right there, that ridge, that's a seam. When these turn brown and they crack, they're gonna crack open and split along that crack right there, that seam. And when that happens, we'll be able to harvest these that's seeds, insane. harvest this whole thing, and then collect the seeds and save those for next year. So this is one plant we're looking at. So we're not ready yet. Not ready right. yet, yep. And then um, the other plants we wanna go check out are, because um, we're gonna collect seeds from them, are our cone flowers throughout the garden. So let's go look at those real quick. So next, we wanna check out our cone flowers around the garden. I got some right behind me here. Let's check these guys out. This is our Cheyenne Spirit. Yay. Yeah, these beautiful. Now, we always like Our collecting favorites. these seeds. What we do, these aren't ready yet, but we come through and we kind of look at them. You know, they're, when, when they start getting ready to collect the seeds, the center of the coneflower starts to get really bulbous. It grows out and it gets really circular or globe-like. And so these are starting to get that way. They're really starting to grow out. And then also these petals start to splay out more and not go flat, but actually start going down. And a lot of these are starting to do that. So Kinda that's like exciting. This one, right? Yeah, this guy right here, this is really cool. Now, when they start doing this, you can come up and start feeling them, start feeling around. If it feels real spiky and it feels like these are like little needles and they're not really giving too much or at all, this is getting really close to being ready to get, uh, to be harvested, the seeds be harvested. And the seeds are all right in here. All those seeds are coming off of one of these, you know, little spike guys right here. There's seeds behind these, below these. So it's almost there, it's still kind of spongy, but once it starts getting really hard and it almost hurts to do this, you'll know this is ready to go. Maybe a couple more weeks. I think so, yeah. yeah I think so, so one more plant that we're keeping our eyes out for to collect seeds from, are these gladioli and aren't these beautiful they're you know they're starting to they're starting to kind of go the way Let's of take a look at that yeah they're really starting oh, to wither a little oh, bit but they're still flowering some are still coming in i mean look at this one next next door here look at this guy where are we? Oops. oh yeah look at that that's still yeah. coming in it oh, hasn't even so really flowered yet a lot of these were later bloomers in our yeah. old garden so yeah, yeah. and so sense. i mean we've got a couple back here too now so fun I've got one right here that this this is one of the first uh, one of the first stems of this gladioli to actually flower. I've got the seed pods right here. They're right here. These little little pods. I mean, these are kind of cool looking, aren't they? And so these are the seed pods. We've already cut this off. We deadheaded this flower stem, this stalk from these gladioli. We're keeping this because we're gonna collect this these pods as soon as they start to. Uh, turn brown and mature a little bit more, we'll be able to get the seeds out of there. And there's a whole bunch. Each flower has right one now? of those, has one of those pods. Yeah, kind of spongy. Squishy. Yeah, squishy. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. But uh, a couple more weeks, we'll crack these open and we'll show you the gladioli, uh, awesome. the gladioli seeds. Have so you have you ever grown gladiolis and collected the seeds? And if so, let us know down below and tell us how it went and what you did. So another thing you can do right now is you can actually look at the plants that you want to take cuttings from. You want to do stem propagation. And one of those plants is uh, the sedums here. We have Autumn Joy sedums. We've got stem cuttings that we took a couple weeks ago or a week ago maybe um, in soil, just potting soil. And then we've got some in water. We and packed them in there. Yeah, we really did. But they should be fine. Um, so yeah, so we did these about a week ago. We got to wait about another two or so weeks. And um, I'm not going to... Do my, I know, I I'm, no, I'm not going to do my normal thing okay. where I turn them upside down and check them. It's only, okay. it hasn't been They're long babies, enough. So. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a tug test. Oh, tug test. Yep. Nope. Nothing yet. 
Yep. And, and you know because they're it's really easily moving. Is that kind of yeah? What you're if for? if they come if they just come right up out of the soil when I tug on them just even a little bit, that means there's no resistance, right? There's no roots makes down sense. there pulling back, keeping them in that same spot. So that makes sense. Um, so that's why you do a little bit of a tug test. Don't yank them out because then. You know that's that's not good all of that uh, rooting hormone that we used if we would have done that all the rooting hormone would be gone it would leave the stem and it wouldn't be in close contact with moisture in the soil so i just did a little tug little movement to see if there's any resistance none at all and so we'll just leave these alone for a couple more weeks and we'll come back and check now if you're interested in taking more cuttings there's plenty of other cuttings you can take this time of year and that's like petunias verbena even fuchsia, and a whole heck of a lot more. Now, if you want to add more plants to your garden, but you want to save money because all those plants at the nursery are getting really expensive, we're offering a course in taking stem cuttings for this fall, and you can be the first to get on our wait list. Click the link down below to get on our wait list. Follow that link and get on our wait list so you can be the first to find out more information about when we're going to offer this class and how you can become a part of that. Okay, you guys, so one of our final tasks today is one that you can do any time of year but weeding. And specifically, we're gonna go after some weeds that are kind of creeping into our beds because we don't want these, some of them have already gone to seed, actually. We didn't catch them in time, like right here. Uh-oh. But uh, we don't want these spreading into our containers. So we're gonna go after those today. Um, they're kind of, yeah. So they're kind of in the mulch, gotta kind of dig them out. Um, we're gonna use this, um, one of our favorite tools we talk about a lot, it was this Corona Tools Hori Hori Knife, this Comfort Gel. It feels so good in my hand. It's got the best grip. So I'm gonna get down in here. These darn things sometimes have a long tap root on them. That wasn't too bad. But try not to bury too many of these. So yeah, just getting under these. Well, kinda, there's a lot more there. There's than a I lot. Thought. I know. Jeez. They're just like everywhere. Yeah, it's probably seeds from that one plant that we just saw. I know, probably. Gosh. So I'm making my little pile over here. Yeah. Yeah, these seeds, they just get everywhere. I love this tool. It makes it so easy to weed. Just pop them up practically. Because you always want to get that root, right? Mm -hmm, those tap roots, yeah. Take that ivy too. We don't want that. Nope, no oh, ivy. Look at, look at how tiny this weed is and look at this long tap root. Oh yeah, look at that. I'll be That's darned. Ridiculous. Pretty cool. Okay. Yep. Things you find in the garden. Okay, you guys, that is a wrap. We got a lot of things done on our yeah, list today. I think that's so enough for now. I think so. Right? There's more to do. Oh, yeah. Always. There's always more. And always. we cannot wait to get new bulbs planted. I know. That's so going to be so much that's fun. That's coming. Yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed all this. And if you have any comments or questions, definitely leave them down below for us. We love hearing from you guys. And make sure to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already so you get updates on our latest videos. Yeah, and don't forget to sign up to be the first to hear oh, yeah. about our new course coming up, especially if you want to save money and get new plants in your garden, which who doesn't? I know, right? So check that uh, link down below and get, get signed up for that. So yep. can't wait to see everybody there. Yay. Yep. So, so other than that, thanks for watching and we'll yep. see you in our next video. Yep. See you later. Bye guys. Bye bye.